Hey, I'm Rob. Welcome back to Photobike. The Lark M1. This is a new entry-level wireless microphone solution from Hollyland, similar to their bigger brother, the Lark 150s, but in a much smaller and wallet-friendly package. The AirPod-style charging case similarity returns, but in a more true fashion, as the whole unit's size is actually much more comparable to many wireless earbud case designs you will find nowadays. Compare that to the beefier Lark 150s, that has all the charging case functionality, but is by no means small enough to put in your pocket, making this feel extremely small. The case holds two transmitters and a receiver. Continuing with the small theme, each transmitter is only 11.8 grams, making it both tiny and lightweight. The super lightweight is extra necessary as you always have to clip these onto someone's shirt if you want to use it. As you can see, there is minimal bunching going on my shirt because it is so light. So far, you have been listening to me exclusively on the M1s, and as you can hear, they sound really great and clear. So, the lack of a lav mic input is not required to get a good sound out of these, but for those looking for versatility, unfortunately, there is no external inputs. Each transmitter, being so tiny, has an incredible eight hour battery life, which means with the Duo kit, all you need to do is when you run out of that eight hours, chuck it in the charger and then you get another eight hours ready to go. Then when it's all bundled back together with the case, you can get a total of 20 hours runtime. You can get two full charges out of just the case alone. And if the whole thing does go flat, you can charge the whole thing in just an hour and a half. And it all comes in this really nice fabric hard case where you can store the M1 kit and all the cables that it comes with. For the cables, it comes with one USB-C charge cable, a TRS audio jack for camera input, a TRRS cable for the mobile phones and laptops, and you can also buy separately audio to lightning or USB-C adapters for connecting directly to a phone as well. Now, you might notice one big difference between these and other similar style lav mics. There's no screen. So how easy are these to use without one? Well, let me give you a run through. When you first open up the case, the battery indicator will light up, showing you exactly how much juice you have left in the case. There's also a light next to each transmitter receiver slot to show you that they are charging as well. To use them, you simply remove the receiver and at least one transmitter from the case, and they should automatically power on and connect. Solid blue lights means a connection has been made. And if it's blinking, it means it's searching. If one of your transmitters is low, both the light on the receiver and the transmitter will turn red. On the transmitters, there's only two buttons. The one on the top is for power, and the one on the bottom turns on and off the really handy built-in noise cancellation. A long hold on the bottom button also is for pairing. For a test, I've had a fan here right next to me this whole time, and if I turn off the noise cancellation, you should now hear that fan come in to play. Here's it off and here's noise cancellation back on. Off and on. Sounds surprisingly good. And, and that's all the controls you get on the transmitters. On the receiver, there are three buttons. The one on its own on the side is just for power on and off. The top button doubles both for volume up and pairing. And the bottom one is for volume down and mode selection. Blue means you're in stereo mode and green means mono. And yes, when you have both transmitters, you get both a left and right channel when in stereo mode. This is one channel, this is the other channel. You can see these are split between the left and right channels of your recording, which you don't always get with lavalier mics in this price range. As for the volume control, unfortunately, there are only three settings here, low, medium, and high. Good enough to give you a little bit of flexibility, but if you do want more control over your audio, you will have to adjust the gain on your device you're recording on. And unfortunately, no individual settings per transmitter. When you set the volume on the receiver, it sets the volume for both. But as you can see, it's super simple and easy to use. Another impressive stat for the size and price of these is that according to Hollyland, these can transmit up to 200 meters or 650 feet, which is 
double the Lark 150s, which are also double the price. Although obviously that is in perfect conditions, but I bet the range on these is much more impressive than its bigger brother and more reliable too. This is done by using Hollyland's exclusive auto frequency hopping technology to make sure the devices are always on the frequency channel with the least interference. But enough of me telling you about the range, let's go see for ourselves. Now I've come out to a big empty field just before we run out of light here. I'm gonna do a little test. I've switched over to the Hollyland Lark 150 so you can get an idea of how this one sounds out in an environment like this. There's very little wind, so I'll probably have to emulate that in the studio a little bit later but I'm gonna start walking and I'll just keep rattling on and see how far this takes to disconnect and then we'll go and test the M1s and see how much better they do. And I'm gonna start walking and this is the hard part where I need to think of things to say, I need to just keep rattling on and I'm gonna keep looking towards the camera and then occasionally switching so I'm looking away to remove that line of sight from the microphone. And uh, how does this sound compared to the M1? Make sure you let me know in the comments below. Anyway, I'm going to walk now and I'm getting a little wave. So it seems to have started to break up. Okay, well, we're getting a bit of break up around here. So keep that in mind. Around this area, this microphone started to fail, mainly when I was looking away and it was losing line of sight. Now we've got quite a big open field here with probably very little interference. So it should fare quite well when got direct line of sight. Okay, I'm going to turn around and I wonder if that is. Yep, line of sight is definitely an issue. But if I'm reconnected, am I reconnected? I'm going to keep walking. Okay, from here on, I'm just going to keep line of sight. I'm just going to keep walking backwards and hopefully I don't fall <laughs> over a pothole or something, over a gopher hole or something. But I'm going to keep walking and talking and trying to think of things to say. The hardest part is just think things to rattle on and stuff. Uh, I'm running it without a lavalier mic right now as it's the closest to the M1 solution that way. Uh, both the Lark 150s and the Lark M1 have wind muffs that you can attach uh, but there's not a lot of wind out here today so I've decided to not have them on. I think it was starting to break up a little bit there, so I'm gonna keep going, and I think we're nearing the end of the limit of this microphone. Quite a distance away from this now. This is probably the longest distance I've ever used these mics with, but it's pretty impressive for such little things. But these are the Lark 150s, so these are only rated for up to 100 meters, whereas the Lark M1s are rated up to 200. Apparently I'm still connected. Had a couple of hiccups here and there, but if I turn around, it's the line of sight. I, use, I lose line of sight and we lose audio connection. But I'm gonna keep walking, keep going, quite a distance here. Um, I've got to remember to keep talking because <laughs> it's really hard to think of things to say when I've been walking for so long. Uh, Yes, well, this is the Lark 150s. One, two, three, mic test, mic test, mic test, mic test, mic test, mic test. Testing, one, two. I'm still talking. One, two. Holy crap, this is a lot further than I was expecting to walk today. I'm still connected, I think. One, two, hello. Testing, one, two. Check, one, check, two, one, mic check. Testing, one, two. This is about as far as you can go with the Lark 150s. So let me go way back to the camera and switch them out and let's test the M1s. Well, now I've switched out to the Lark M1s and while we still have a tiny little bit of sunlight, let's go and test these. I'm probably gonna walk a little bit quicker this time as I expect to probably go quite a bit further than the Lark M1s. I wasn't quite expecting them to go so far. But yeah, I'm gonna start walking. I'm currently not rocking the noise cancellation uh, so you can get a good idea of the kind of background noise you might pick up. You'll probably hear some birds, some dogs, and maybe some kids playing in the park. Yep, so this is me walking away from the camera. It was around about, it was around about 
near here that the Lark 150s broke up. But um, I think it was about here when I was facing away from the camera. So here I'm facing away from the camera with no line of sight. From my testing, it seems that when I'm facing away from the camera, there's not a complete disconnection, but there is some interference problems. So maybe that's how they get that 200 meter range, is it's not maybe completely stable signal, but it at least stays connected. I guess that's the lesser of two evils in the end, but I'm still continuing to talk to the camera. It's so hard to just think of things to say and continue a rambling stream of talking. Anyway, we're quite far from the point of the Lark 150s breaking up, but it seemed like this seemed to do a little bit of a breaking up problem as well at around that range, mainly without line of sight. So I'm gonna to continue to remain line of sight with the camera to see how far these actually can go. Okay, this is about the range of the Lark 150s. As you can see, I'm still connected. Although from the waves I'm getting from behind the camera, it seems to be breaking up ever so slightly. Maybe some noise and static. But I'm gonna keep going and see if it stays connected. Even if it doesn't sound the best, we'll see how far it can go. I was actually a little bit further than the 150s just then, but uh, I'll keep going and see how far we can go. Oh yes, I have to remember to talk. I am talking, one, two, one, two. Check, one, check, two, one, mic check. Checking one, two, one, two. Check one, check two, one mic check. Checking one, two. I'm considerably further than the Lark 150s now. Uh, maybe a whole third further away than the 150s got me. I'm continuing to talk and walk away from the camera. I can barely see the camera anymore. The camera probably can barely see me. I'm gonna continue walking. I'm a good third further away than the Lark 150s now. And as long as I'm standing still, it seems like the quality remains. It's the movement that seems to be the issue with these long distances. But I'm gonna keep going and stop periodically if it's still connected. Okay, I think we found it. This is about the range limit. And I can say this is maybe... Okay, now I'm at a little bit more of a reasonable range. I can say that these little M1 microphones are extremely impressive, doing almost double what the more than double priced Lark 150s can do. But yeah, that's a good conclusion to these microphones and let's head back to the studio for our final thoughts. You can pick up the Lark M1 Duo kit, that's the one with the two transmitters like the one I have here for £149 and if you just want one you can pick up the Uno kit for £89. This is about half the price of what the 150 launched at. And you're not sacrificing that much. And especially with the range, you're even getting an upgrade in some places. From my time with these, the audio of these seems crisp and clean. Although a little harsh sometimes, the lack of lavalier input along with its limited controls may reduce its overall versatility slightly, but nowhere near as much as you might think. Mostly due to their super small and lightweight design makes these really easy to clip on and hide on your subject. I've got it quite obvious here, but as you can see, there's very little bunching going on my shirt. But in conclusion, the Lark M1 is a super user-friendly wireless microphone solution. Excellent battery life, impressive noise cancellation with great compatibility, all in a super tiny and lightweight package at an equally small price. But yeah, that has been the Lark M1s from Hollyland. Let me know your thoughts on the mics in the comments below. Do you prefer the sound of these over the Lark 150s? Uh, do they sound good to you? Would you purchase some? Or is that lack of a lav mic input a real put off? Let me know in the comments below. I've been Rob, this has been Photobyte. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.